Scott, you're muted. That was a practice run. I started I started my speech before the mute was off, so now I'm really warmed up. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, yes, yeah, so the purpose of this work session tonight is to uh, talk with you about the potential for the, the county roads transfer, uh, which is something that I know that um, the council and the city have been talking about for some time. Uh, and we're getting to the point now where we need to uh, receive some direction from you on kind of a go, no go to move forward and negotiate an agreement with the county. So we'll get into those details. Um, the other part of this is that we want to, uh, it, because it's related, we want to take the opportunity. And, and I know some of you at different times have brought up the need to, or the desire to have a conversation around our, our, our roads uh, improvements um, and our street our street projects, if you will. Um, so we're gonna talk about our five-year CIP, that's the capital improvement uh, plan for streets and kind of present that holistically with the discussion about the county roads transfer. Um, assisting me with the presentation tonight, we're gonna be doing some tag team here. So hopping in and out of the, the hot chair here on the, on the Zoom camera, uh, will be interim public works director, Jerry Nelzine and uh, finance director, Julie Blums. Um, and uh, so the, the desired outcome tonight of this work session with you is uh, to get a consensus direction on proceeding uh, to, to negotiate an agreement with the county on a road transfer to the city, uh, roads, plural, transfer to the city. And again, we'll, we'll walk through those with you. Uh, and then um, we, would bring a, we would bring back an IGA to you, an intergovernmental agreement at some point if we were to proceed with that. So you're not, you're not approving anything, you're just giving us direction to proceed or not on negotiating. Um, and then additionally, additionally, as we talk about the five-year CIP for our street plan, uh, street projects, um, we're gonna request that you just provide some general consensus on that CIP um, or whether you wish to amend that and kind of in, incorporated into that, something that is not on the CIP currently for streets is the undergrounding of utilities on the Ivy Street project. So um, we will work our way into that piece of the conversation, but um, we'll be looking for some direction on that as well. So to begin with, um, what I'd like to do is ask Jerry Nelzine to, uh, to come up and walk you through the details of the proposed county roads transfer. And we've got a nice slideshow that um, Mr. Delzine and his team have put together actually with our, um, with some GIS stuff that we're working on, which is really, uh, really cool. Uh, and, and kind of pinpoints the, the spots that we're looking at in actually the potential transfer. So I'm gonna ask Mr. Delzine to come forward here and give you some info. And then uh, I'll be back with you. Hi everyone, how are you tonight? So uh, <clears throat> we've been trying to do this for a long time and I'm excited to say that we're finally here to bring this forward with you. So we threw this together real quick. Sorry you didn't have a chance to look at it beforehand, but uh, it's just gonna go over this. I'm gonna try to go over this as fast as I can so we have time for some questions. So just to get started here, it's, um, it's several roads. It's not all of them, but it's a good start. Um, I've got the distance on it, uh, the, how long they are, the square feet and all that. And the square feet you'll see is important because uh, they're gonna be paying us for uh, tons of asphalt to do it for a two inch overlay. Um, they uh, sweetened the deal a little bit by throwing in ADA ramp improvements and giving us $6,500 a ramp. So um, this is the best deal we've seen. So starting with it, uh, before I start on uh, moving through this, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Can you see this fine? Is everything good? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, the first road is uh, North Maple, which is south of territorial, um, that's one that's uh, been a big problem that uh, traffic safety has been working on. So the county really wanted that one to start. So we got North Maple North and North Maple South. And once the North Maple South is 0.2 miles long, North Maple Street uh, North is about just under a half a mile. Um, uh, 
all county jurisdiction. Uh, moving down is uh, the other one is North Locust, north of Territorial, uh, connecting Auburn Farms into there, into that new subdivision. And I'll be coming back on these going over more stuff, but I just want to get through the roads. The other one is the South Redwood uh, over on the south side that's been falling apart that we've had all the complaints. And um, we thought the county owned the whole thing and found out recently they don't. Um, I don't know how that happened, but basically it's from Southeast Township to between 9th and 10th over there. So that other road was ours the whole time. Um, the other portion, portion of South Redwood from between 9th and 10th to uh, 13th. Uh, then there is North Redwood Street, the other cross town between from Public Works up towards almost 11th Street. Uh, a lot of development going on in there and everything. It's almost a half a mile long, uh, really bad shape. So that is all of the roads uh, that we are, uh, they are proposing for us to agree with an IGA before July 1. Um, so, uh, how do I get over and slide over? Oh, there we go. Is this right? No, I can't see my. I think I'll be able to see it now if I go down, right? Yeah. I hope. Okay. So this is some pictures of the county roads that just to give you an idea and it's does the city want to take these roads over. Um, I'd like to um, just because we can do this. This is uh, North Maple, a road we did last year and uh, turned out wonderful. And this is kind of what stuff would look like when we would get done with it. Um, uh, so Clackamas County agrees to the following uh, transfers of 6,500 and ADA ramp for sidewalks upgrades to us. Uh, they're proposing $110 a ton for asphalt, which is great for the two inch overlay. Uh, normally we're in the $80 a ton range. So that's a good price because most of our paving is fluctuated off oil prices. So that kind of factors in if we didn't get on these right away, we'd be safe on that price. Um, now I got North Maple South. Um, basically, you can look at the, the one that matters down here. It's There's two things. Uh, the transfers up in the first paragraph, they're transferring basically $95,000 for that street. And then in the bottom is after we take that money, it's going to cost us about uh, $450,000 out of pocket to upgrade that street. And so some of them are more because of their condition and they don't have sidewalks. Some of them throughout this, you'll see our uh, development will, will, uh, will upgrade. So that helps on these higher prices. Um, North Maple North, same thing. Um, they're contributing basically 125,000, but that one's a big one. It's gonna cost us about 930,000 to upgrade. Sidewalks, all the, all the stuff for the improvements. Um, North Locust. Uh, North Locust is going to be basically completely reconstructed with development. So we won't have, we'll just, we'll end, we'll end up in, end up with $108,000 um, from the county uh, to take that over and be able to put that towards the other roads that are costing more money. Um, South Redwood, that one uh, is a little bit more the road's gotten so bad that we're going to have to uh we're going to have to do a little bit more than just an overlay on it it's going to need some more treatment than that so uh looking at it we're going to get 127,000 from the county and it's going to cost about 344,000 345,000 to update um and then north redwood it's uh Basically, depending on how fast we want to do that, uh, they're going to contribute 308,000. Uh, but developments mainly, as we just work with development, they will be upgrading that one. And those those are all of the uh, those are all of the roads that they want to do now. And so, basically, uh, we recommend um, uh, to 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 engage in this IGA. Uh, we got, we've been, Julie's got this uh, CIP worked out and we've looked at it and this is, 
this is a really good proposal from the county and uh, goes over here a little bit more about the ADA ramps, the what we're paying for, what they're gonna pay for asphalt. And uh, this is what the total number is of the number to the right, $763,865 is the total transfer they're gonna do to take over these roads. Um, that's it, any questions? I don't have a question, Brian, but uh, I do have a comment. Uh, let's see if there is anybody who actually has a question first. So, so I have a question. Um, doesn't the county have a legal obligation to maintain its own roads? Uh, that's a good question. Um, how do I? Yeah. 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 Yes. I guess that's an easy question. Yeah. <laughs> They, they have probably, our standards for city streets are probably yeah. higher than the, the, Their standards are higher than ours. Their, their design standards are actually higher than ours. When someone comes in and wants to do development and they follow county standards, it's better than our standard. So as long as someone else is paying for it, they have really high standards. Yeah, correct. correct. There are miles and miles and miles of county road in disrepair because they claim they don't have the funds for maintenance. So ours are part of those miles of road that they don't maintain. Yeah, and Councillor Bangs for the, I guess I got, I've worked with uh, Mayor Hodson and Councillor Hensley and Councillor Parker a long time on this. So I guess I should, um, realize you're new to this whole thing, I think on what, why are we taking over their roads and not making them put, upgrade them to uh, standards before we do? That's a, that's a tough one. And Brian, you've been going to C4 forever. Um, do you have a quick answer for Councillor Bangs for that? Um, let's see. My quick answer is that, um, We did, that was the original ask was for the county to bring them up to our code and then we would take them over. Um, so that was our opening offer to say, we want these roads because you're not maintaining them and our residents, they don't know the difference between a county road and a city road. And we should have had these taken over probably three decades ago. Um, and so that was the initial opening conversation. And so over the last couple of years, um, we got to a point where this actually be, gained traction and was having some movement. And when we were looking at the, when the county was looking at the vehicle registration fee, gas tax to help fund um, the maintenance piece, and then hopefully to leverage that to do other projects, the topic of the county roads within cities came up and it turned out that really in most of the Clackamas County cities, we had probably the highest amount of roads. And so the larger cities, Lake Oswego, West Lynn, Wilsonville, this wasn't a problem or a concern for them. Um, and so it really didn't move up the list of priorities for the county. And so the, our ask quickly dwindled to, well, here's our, our best offer, which is what we have today. Um, they just, you know, should they have taken care of them? Chris, absolutely, they should have. Um, they chose not to and spend the money elsewhere. Um, as Jerry was explaining, as an example, South Redwood, that should have been a, a transfer to us literally 30 plus years ago. Uh, and just somehow got missed when that conversation occurred. Uh, North Redwood, North Pine, uh, those are going through redevelopment along there. So those those will eventually be ours as those properties annex in and get developed. Um, these other ones that just, you know, Maple Street is a great example that we, that we did last year. Um, that was a huge improvement to that stretch there with the sidewalks and new paving. So, um, 
you know, we don't we don't get to push the county around. They get to tell it, push it back on us. Thanks, Brian. That's that's hundred percent accurate. I I appreciate you getting everyone up to speed on that. I should have probably started with that. No, that's okay, Council Parker. Well, one of the very and this this is a. a object lesson for our new counselors is that one of the first conversations that I participated in as a city council 11 years ago was this conversation that made no sense to me. So if you guys are hearing things that make no sense, let us know. But uh, when Brian and I were first on the council, and I think this was even before Tracy got there, the, the attitude was that if the county isn't going to bring them up to city standards, then we're not going to take them. And and it was a total stalemate. Uh, and and I, I'm going to credit the mayor in, 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 in working with the county on getting a deal with them and for, frankly, breaking this logjam that uh, just as intransigent as the county was, the, the city leaders at the time said, uh, we're not going to take something over that isn't up to city standards. Right. I remember that. Yeah. And and so finally, over the years, uh, a couple of us said, you know what? I am tired of having citizens complain about these roads that everybody thinks is in the city. And I'm tired of explaining uh, that it's county roads. And at various times in county in this in the city of Canby's history that we've we've had a more pro or less pro development council what we've had in some of these roads and and Brian alluded to it is that as the city limits changed and went from uh, incorporated city to unincorporated county and became city property that the city of Canby did not insist that those roads be improved at a developer expense. The can was kicked down the road and, and here we are picking it up. So a uh, little bit of object lesson about the sins of the fathers uh, uh, having to be paid by the sons. Uh, Jerry, I, I just wanna make sure I've, I've got a, a, a understanding of, on our net costs there, that, that, that the total cost uh, to do all of these projects minus the contribution from the county nets us out at at what price? Is that the seven hundred thousand you were talking about? The, I apologize. I got behind on this, and I didn't. I knew that was going to be asked, but I have it all in here. I didn't add it up, so it's about a it's about a million dollars, and okay. and their and contribution seven sixty six. And and what do we pull in a year? Well, now. I guess I don't know the answer to this, is that uh, we're not letting you finish your presentation. Where do these funds come from? Are these going to be the uh, fee? Yeah, I'm okay. gonna let uh, Scott fill in on this. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead on you. Actually, exactly. Council, right. Council, yes, exactly. Councilor Parker, that's a perfectly teed up segue uh, for uh, kind of continuing the conversation. So. Uh, I'm going to ask our finance director, Julie Blums, to come up and walk you through our CIP and how we pay for these types of projects. We have a number of different um, funding sources, and I do want to just be clear, maybe Julie can elaborate. Councilor Parker, what I think you were getting at is what the net cost to the city of taking these roads and improving them. It costs us money in the end. It's We're not to the positive. Yeah, and just to be perfectly clear, and perhaps Julie can talk a little bit more about that. Good evening. Hi, Julie. How have you been? I've been great. How about you? Good. Now that I have heat again, I'm actually happy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to answer your question, Councilor Parker, the, the net from what we're going to receive from the county to the cost that it will be to improve those roads, it will cost us about a million dollars out of our own money. So Melissa just pulled this up for me. This is the five-year CIP that it, um, we do every year for you guys during the budget time. And we've updated it, to try to get it as close to, um, as close as we could get as of right now. And 
we have about $20 million worth of projects over the next five years to do. Um, this does include a very, very back of the napkin rough estimate for the industrial park connection. Um, we have the costs for the Ivy Street project, and then also the cost for all the projects that we had in our um, that book that we gave out last year with all of our CIP projects. The other thing I included in here was the costs for the three roads that we would have to improve if we take them from the county. Those are noted as county road on the spreadsheet. And I also included our street maintenance projects, just the an average of what we spend year to year on our street maintenance projects. So you can get a full picture of what our, our street needs are over the next five years. So um, funding wise, the county roads would be funded from um, the street maintenance and gas tax fund. So the, the 763,000 that we would receive, we would put it in with that pot of money uh, to be used uh, with those roads. And then the other projects on this list have varying funding sources from SDCs. Um, some of them have sewer and storm components. So it's kind of all over the board where they would be funded from. Um, I do have that, but it's very cumbersome and <laughs> would probably make your eyes cross. <laughs> so do you have questions? No? Okay. So, well, I, Julie, I guess I've got one. Okay. So looking at $20.6 million in projects um, to be done um, and I'm guessing that's spread out over how many years? Five. Over five years. Um, how much annually does our road maintenance and gas tax generally, again, 2020, 2021 here is an anomaly, uh, obviously going to be considerably less uh, on a gas tax piece uh, for the city, what have we annually brought in on that piece? But between the two of them, we bring in about a million dollars a year total. Okay, so if we're looking at the next three years, we have about a $4 million shortfall every year of doing all those projects in that year. Well, some of these projects are SDC eligible as well. Okay. Um, so... At the moment, um, you know, it's a, it's a puzzle and you move a piece and things change. So um, I have put together with, our, with the different funding options that we have for each of these. And, you know, we can make it all the way out until about 24, 25 with the funds that we have plus what will come in. In revenue and, and be able to cover those. Now we may be able to cover more because we don't know what's you know what development's going to do. We have some uh, Fed fund money that we're waiting to find out exactly how much we get. The state is changing the way that program works, uh, so we're waiting to find out what our five-year amount is. And once I have that, I can plug that in as well as another funding option. So it, this is as close as I could get today. <laughs> no, Julian, I, no, and I totally appreciate your sharpening the pencil and getting it figured out. The, my other question is, too, um, does the revenue side of things for these projects, does this include the county VRF? um funds as well yes okay so if that goes away we will have a hole okay Let's see any other questions before i give it back to scott what is the vrf um funds so what's that what's that potential gap if that were to fall through well 
we have not received a full year of it, so I'm not real. Last year we received 82,000. This year we're slated to receive about 300, but based on the way it's coming in, I think we're going to get more like 200,000. So um, it's hard to tell exactly how much, but we, we are supposed to get about 300,000 a year. Yeah, Councilor Tibbles, the vehicle registration fees spread for for the city of Canby was going to be rough, roughly 300, 330,000 a year. And then depending again on, on growth and cars in Canby, et cetera, then that could grow based on that as well. Councilor Parker? Um, I'm going to try and take another shot at uh, what the mayor was asking. Um, so we don't have in front of us uh, the net numbers. When, once you take away the projects that are funded by SDCs, uh, uh, the partner with uh, uh, water and sewer and that sort of thing, we don't have isolated um, what the uh, numbers are in order to figure out the difference between revenue and expenditures for the for the projects yes we've got, we've, we've got pro it, it, for the purposes of of my question i only want to know what the shortfall is for things that are funded by the, the vehicle registration fee the the, the gas uh, state shared revenues and the county uh, county vehicle registration fee that revenue compared to the parts of this that need to be funded by this that's the number i'm looking for brian is that what you were trying to get to as well yeah i mean yes yeah i believe so i mean with Again, looking at the total nut of twenty and a half million dollars, you know, yeah, we start peeling away some of these funding sources like the county's VRF. I mean, three hundred thirty thousand dollars a year is um, that's a big chunk. And to go back to you know conversation that you and I have had, Greg, about you know if we know we've got certain steady streams, so to speak, with you know, our own gas tax, our own road maintenance fee, the county's VRF, you know, right now we're still at, I think, under 2% um, interest rate to go out and just, you know, go and do the $20 million, get it done cheap now. And, in you know, do we have, are those pieces, those funding sources eligible to be used towards doing, you know, uh, a, a, a bond or a debt payment. I would like uh, uh, staff to um, come back to us um, with uh, some net numbers here. Um, it, it's th this is great. I do need to know the entirety within which we are doing things. Um, but uh, isolating it to the question of the discussion tonight, which is taking over county roads, which I don't know, maybe some of that we will be able to use with uh, SDC. I think Jerry said in one in with the North Territorial part of that could be paid for by future development. But uh, it would be uh, helpful from a prioritization by the council. Uh, to say, um, to know what what the revenues match up to the needs that won't be met um, by outside revenue sources. Um, we are close to having that. Okay. Um, I have what it is, but I'm still waiting on numbers from the state. So it, it, I'm not I'm not ready to give you a final number because I don't know how much we're going to get. Yeah, but uh, but I do I do have that. <laughs> well, it, let let me just say that that from a from policy standpoint, from from where I sit, uh, a, a million dollars is going to be worth it. 
to stop having to explain to people why roads in the city of Canby uh, aren't up to city standards. I, I, to me, a million dollars is a bargain on that. Uh, Brian, a uh, back step here on something that was kind of kicked around here about the vehicle registration fee. Is, is, is there a, a legal challenge or, or an, an effort to undo that? Or are you just talking about a, a, a possible decline in estimated revenues? Um, all of the above, Greg. So, so right now, um, vehicle registration, like Julie was saying, the the cut or the portion coming to the, to the city is down just because of what we've been going through here in the last year. The other piece is is that uh, us BCC Chair uh, Smith and the Commission on I think Tuesday of next week in a work session are going to be discussing. Um, rolling back the vehicle registration fee um, as a possible. So the board of C BCC voted it in, and now they're going to have a conversation of, of repealing that um, piece. And so uh, right now it's just in a work session conversation, but that is uh, on the docket for conversation. So I don't know. Um, at C4, we're watching that very closely, and I've been having some conversations with a number of mayors across the county about it and it's kind of a mixed bag on you know uh, much like when can be voted to do the the maintenance fee and gas tax that you know the city council uh at the time voted that in and the argument is should the council vote it in or should it be the vote of the people um that's kind of where this art conversation is at uh the board of county commissioners should the county commissioners have voted it in or gone out to the voters again to ask for that? So that's the current conversation. So if the BCC decides to, uh, I guess, rescind this and not have it anymore, then right, then that's a three hundred and thirty thousand um, dollar gap or you know piece that we'll have to make up somewhere and somehow. All right, I was not aware of that. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Spoon and then Councillor Tibbles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in regards to the um, taking the county roads back and putting putting them in the city's care, um, I just want to say I I know that there's an expense to it, but I think what we've learned over the last decade is that the county has no intention on ever bringing them up to standard and i think the people that live and use those roads deserve roads that are drivable and passable so um for me i don't love the expense i would rather them bring them up to standard first but i think we've learned that's not going to happen so uh, i'm i am totally okay with moving forward in that capacity thank you councillor tibbles Couple questions. Um, so we we talked about how this was the best deal so far. How many back and forths have we had with getting this bet best deal that we're at today? And what does that negotiation process look like? Uh, and I'll just I'll just preface it with my concern is that uh, I think we can all look at the uh, ninety nine the industrial park connection transportation piece being huge. Uh, it was actually my biggest concern as coming on as a councilman that we built an industry that heavily required on trucking and then didn't build the infrastructure to handle said trucking. And I think there's, and I work in transportation supply chain logistics and, and commodity trading. So I know that truckers will do what they're going to do in the meantime. And there's going to be, uh, there's going to be effects until that transportation piece comes in and we build that connector road. And I would imagine more damages to roads that they're using in the meantime. Uh, whether they say that they're going to use a certain path and not others, uh, I just that's it's not realistic. So my concern is that we're, while I totally agree with the validity and concern of hey, if the, the county's not going to do this, um, we need and I don't know the history and the back and forth, which is why I'm asking you this question. But are we biting off more than we can chew of taking on roads when we have an unknown expense of probably the highest priority in transportation of the connector? And also the the costs that we don't know that are coming from the trucks that are going to use the route that doesn't exist right now are the are the other roads um, which are, are going to come. So sorry, that was a long-winded question, but I just 
wanted to throw it out there so I could get a little bit of a history of at least that negotiation process. Do we have any chips to work um, past this point? So I'm going to break down your question, Jordan, into I think two pieces. One, the negotiation and where where do we start and how do we get here? And then um, I think it's a priority question um, for the second part. Uh -huh. um, Negotiation-wise, um, yeah, this goes back um, again with the initial piece was um, us going to the county saying, hey, um, we need these roads fixed. More times than not, whenever there's an issue with a county road, um, Public Works gets the phone call, Public Works goes out, patches that stretch of road. Um, we try to build a county and the county says, hey, thanks for fixing that road. We really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, you know, and then follows it with the checks in the mail, which has never been the case. Um, and so we that's when the, the dialogue became like, well, it, they I think and Jerry might be able to correct me on this one. It became a mutual conversation of, hey, do you have an interest in taking these over? And we said, yes. And they said, well, great. Um, when do you want them? And we said, when you fix them. And um, that really did go on and, and locked uh, for a number of years back and forth on that. Um, probably the biggest ground came about here in the last probably couple of years with um, this being moved into a conversation with um, the vehicle registration fee conversation that the county was having because you know we we saw that as if they were going to go out to the voters to to vote that in that for the citizens of canby and a couple of other cities malala is another one um estacated not so much sandy was a little bit um they actually had didn't have it like i said we we were the the bigger concern was that was a selling point if they were to go out to the voters that this would be something that could be advantageous to do. Um, and so that's where it started to gain more traction. Then to come to find out that a lot of the cities just did not have that same um, drive to, to address the county roads like we do and have. Um, and then so probably in the last couple of years, it's been um, myself and you know a few of the other counselors having those conversations. And then Jerry doing a lot of heavy lifting with the county as well, going, okay, like, let's talk about this for real. Like, we're interested, you're interested, um, you know, how about this? And, you know, and that's where um, I think Jerry here probably in the last two years has closed, closed that last bit of gap to get us to where they'll, they'll put in, you know, more money than probably what's current market is what Jerry's saying. Um, I mean, uh, doing ADA ramps, I think, Jerry, we were doing it. Uh, our team, your team, was putting them in at a cost of about $3,500 a ramp, correct? That's that's a pretty honest uh, Yeah, so yeah. to get the county to give us $6,500 a ramp, that in, if – you know, Jerry's team is still up to doing those. There's a cost savings there for us to do that. So there's some, there's some more of a give from the county than what was originally put there. So that's how we got on that end. Um, the priority piece, I think the other part of your question, Jordan. Um, yeah, that I, um, unfortunately, I think Oregon is notorious for um, roads as an afterthought. Um, and so when you look at where we've seen tremendous growth, I mean, not just in Canby, but elsewhere, you see the growth happen and then they go, oh, we should probably put in a better road here now versus doing it beforehand. Um, everything at every conversation that I have been in regarding um, state transportation improvement funds, um, state transportation improvement plan, everything is an afterthought. Um, and it's not a lot of forethought into um, that piece. And so it ends up costing us more. Hence, you know, Walnut Street being seven and a half million dollars versus if we if that was a piece that we had done, you know, 10 years ago, knowing that we were going to need it. Right. Build it and they will come kind of a thing. 
Um, you know, so hopefully someday we'll be able to go, yeah, let's put in that piece of infrastructure before we attract those businesses. No, and I appreciate that, Mayor, and, and a lot of this is, is catch up, and I think there's, and I agree with uh, Councillor Parker, and I would love, really like to see the, the net numbers before I feel really confident, because I think when you hear the unknowns of uh, certain income streams may go away, and um, I, I honestly don't think that we have a, a great understanding of what the wear and tear on the roads th until we get that connector road in is going to be, and it's going to be, I think, substantial, and where are we budgeting for that? Uh, so my concern is not necessarily the validity of needing those to take over those roads for the betterment of our city. It's more on where is our top priority. And to me, it's the connector to get those trucks from not coming and destroying more roads that we would have to take over. So are we taking on too many projects and not focusing on what the actual um, Titanic that's heading to the iceberg, so to speak. And the fact that we don't have a, a quote uh, we have a back of the napkin quote on, and understandably so, we just are working through it right now of uh, what that cost is going to be on that connector road. Those are all a lot of big, big questions. No, for sure. And that, that is, that is a big question. Like, you know, you bring up, um, you know, we can talk about uh, Columbia distribution and running out Haynes road. Um, and eventually Haynes Road is going to probably end up being in city limits at some point. Yeah. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, um, you know, and how much of a patchwork is the county going to be moving to that road um, over that, that time frame, right? And we watch it break down and then, you know, does that reverse the situation? You know, we have this conversation 10 years from now or 20 years from now on that, on that particular road. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. And I, I'd i love to see and say that the county is going to get ahead of some of these things. Um, they haven't shown that so far regarding roads. Councilor Parker? Just so that we're not confusing staff on direction, uh, even though I would like some more information on, on the numbers, it does not change my position on staff moving ahead with taking over the county roads. If, if we have to have a 10 year improvement plan instead of a five year improvement plan, great. But um, all of the discussion that I've been having and, and Jordan, I'd, I'd like to know your opinion on that as well. If you have no problem with, with the staff moving ahead with us taking over the, the county roads. I guess um, from a fundamental need standpoint, I don't stand opposed to the idea of taking over the roads. I think the more autonomy we have as a city is, is wonderful. Um, and I don't count on the county. Um, I'm skeptic is best on that. So I, I get agree with that. To me, it's the, it's the, uh, when do we make that decision piece? And I'm not ready to make that decision tonight because those without those numbers without a better than a uh, napkin estimate on the connector road which i think is the top priority um i just don't feel like i'm armed with enough information to make the decision that so yes i agree with you in in premise on the on actually owning those roads but am i ready to say we should move forward with them tonight no i'm not scott um I realize we're running up against time here, uh, and so I just wanted to try to see if I can put a bit of a bow on this, and then I still wanted to touch on the Ivy Street utilities issue that I mentioned earlier, and it does kind of play into this. Um, you've, you've made some, uh, this conversation has brought up some excellent points, and we realize that this is just the first of probably, uh, you know, multiple conversations with you. The, the main thing we needed to, to know tonight was a, just sort of a general consensus of should we proceed and negotiate this agreement with the county as it's being proposed? Um, the timeliness of that particular issue is that um, the county is relying on, um, speaking of the vehicle registration fee, they're taking the, um, the contribution that they're giving us towards these road improvements 
from, I believe, their own, not the city uh, of Canby's uh, distribution, but the county has its own distribution that it can use for general projects in the county. I believe they're taking that 700 and some thousand from that fund. And if there's a threat for that funding source to go away in the next, uh, say, 12 to 18 months or more or whatever, whatever it might be, it would be nice for us to at least lock up what we, at this point, we consider this as kind of our, our best offer that we've received over as I think the mayor and, and others um, eloquated so well is just, this has been going on for a number of years and we've kind of arrived at this point of, we can either continue to try to negotiate a better deal um, with the likelihood of that being kind of slim, it appears, um, but I'm willing to do it if you ask me to do that. However, we stand a chance of losing, I think this funding that they're offering with these roads right now. So it's a little bit of a, a gamble that way. So I do hear you all on um, wanting a bigger picture of a snapshot of our whole, of our whole transportation uh, plan in terms of our, our street improvements. We'll bring that back to you. We'll share more information with you. We were trying to fold that into this discussion about the, the county roads transfer tonight, just to give you the whole scope. And obviously that's generated a number of, of good questions and excellent discussion. We'll, we'll bring that back to you, but I think what we just need to know tonight is sort of a thumbs up, thumbs down, should we proceed? And then we will bring back the agreement to you. And at that point in time, you have the opportunity to have further discussion. We could also schedule another work session in between now and whenever we would bring that back to you to have more discussion around this. And I'd suggest maybe we do that, although our work session dockets are starting to fill up, but we'll figure out a way to do that. Um, the other piece of this, and that might tie in, this is sort of my last um, tie in to the, uh, to the funding strategy, is that the, um, the council previously asked us to investigate options and costs on the undergrounding of utilities for Ivy Street when we do that project. Now that got moved out another year. So I think we're looking at 2023 for construction at this point. Um, so it's still a ways out. But we need to we need to let the county. So that's a county project, also by the way. Um, we need to let the county know fairly soon whether we would like to have them include the undergrounding of the utilities in that project or just leave it as was initially planned, which is overheading. So here's a quick uh, here's a quick summary for you. Um, we've been working with the Canby Utility Board. Um, Cub is willing to. Uh, allow this to happen. Um, and they have uh, estimated that the cost for them to do the original plan, which is overheaded, uh, overheading of lines at about $200,000. So that's the number they're using. And that's the amount that they're willing to say that they will contribute towards the city's um, costs. Uh, so the city would be responsible for any cost above this amount. That's what we've been able to get a essentially an agreement from uh, Cub at this point. Now, we, we don't have a, a written agreement that's a, a, over the course of some conversations. Um, there have been a number of conversations about the costs and there have been some, um, there have been some rough estimates done that were um, you know, in the $600,000 range for the undergrounding. Um, but what we decided that we needed to do, uh, Mr. Nelzine and I, was um, we needed to have an engineer's estimate done. So we actually asked the county project engineer for that project to give us an engineer's estimate for the undergrounding cost. And that cost that they gave us is estimated at $1.3 million. That's a pretty big number, obviously. Um, and so less the, the cub contribution of 200,000, that leaves us at about $1.1 million. This is not in our current CIP. So there's another 1.1 or perhaps even you know a, a little bit more if you inflate uh, and add one more year of, of time on that um, because that was done at, at the um, at the earlier timeline of this would have been done a year sooner um, we hope that that's the highest liability that's kind of the idea is that you get an engineer's estimate and that's the that's the ceiling and you hopefully you, you your, your bids come in more competitive than that but we want to give you realistic numbers so since this is not in our CIP, if we want to do this or if we want to explore this, we would need to do one of two things as I see it. And that is we would adjust our CIP and that means we would move, move items off of that list that are currently on there. And you just had a robust discussion about the importance of certain projects and all that. 
So we would have to move the puzzle pieces within the current CIP to make this work. Or um, the idea was, was raised earlier in this conversation about doing some bonding, some revenue bonding uh, or uh, AKA financing of um, either this project and or some of the other projects that you might prioritize. Um, interest rates right now obviously are um, about as good as, as they've been, um, but they could start to escalate. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but um, as the, at the point when we got to actually doing some bonding, you know, they, 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 that, that could be a different uh, scenario, but right now the, the revenue, excuse me, the interest rates are very favorable. Uh, so we need, we need to kind of a move ahead or not on the county roads transfer this evening, if, if you want to give us that direction um, and we'll begin to negotiate that, that discussion into actual written agreement. And then we can come back to you with some of this additional conversation. The county is giving us um, kind of, you know, they're putting pressure on us to say, do you want those utilities underground or not? Because they have to give direction to their project engineers to, to design it a certain way. So I realize we're hitting you with a lot of information this evening. This probably could have been a three hour work session and perhaps we need to have some additional conversations around this, but um, wanted to at least get that um, information in front of you on the, um, the Ivy Street issue and in terms of how it impacts the whole, the whole entire CIP. Um, so I'm gonna kind of stop talking and let you respond. And again, I know we're, we're pushing past our start time of our regular meeting, I apologize. No, it's all good dialogue, Scott, so it's okay. Um, Councillor Varwick, Councillor Hensley, Councillor Bangs, thought, I mean, kind of heard from looking at my screen, the one side of my screen, and looking now at the other side here in terms of thoughts on moving ahead with direction to staff to pursue it or not. This project's been a long time coming. I I think we should continue down the road of getting the county roads in our acquisition and under our jurisdiction and in our street improvement schedule. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in that same boat of, you know, if we're, if we're at the best we're going to get from them, which I know it's been a lot of back and forth and, and it's great to finally have them offering some money. Um, I know that their original plan was for us to take them over and not give us anything. Um, and so the fact that we're getting something and that they're offering us, you know, a decent amount, I think um, we might be foolish not to take it um, and hope, you know, hoping that, that we get more. Sometimes, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And so if we have them offering money that is, you know, a fair amount, there might be some peace in uh, not having to answer those questions anymore as well. So there's some value in that, you know, being able to get those streets repaired. So I, I think, yeah, I think we should move forward with it just so that if for no other reason, so that we can have control over getting those streets fixed. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilor Banks. Yeah, I'm a thumbs up too. I'm wondering if Jerry can figure out a way to put another 330 ADA ramps in, because I think we could probably pay for it that way. And, and, um, Maybe another 100 on the Ivy thing. I, I'm in favor of both projects, and if we have to spend the money, I, I'd be in favor of looking into that bonding option. But I, I won't pose any resistance to taking over these roads. Okay. Well, thank you all. I appreciate the dialogue on this. I think Scott. I think we've got a, a majority consensus of, of moving forward with, um, you know, planning our destiny of moving uh, county roads into our jurisdiction so that we can. Um, do do as we need to with those roads. So let's let's move forward and and uh, um, we'll and and start planning for that and how we can get there to do so. Understood. Um, so we'll proceed that way. I appreciate that. And then um, obviously we need to come back to you as soon as we're able and have a, a some additional conversation around the 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 entire CIP uh, for our streets plans and, and then fold in this Ivy Street uh, undergrounding discussion. We, we really probably need to do that part sooner than later. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll work with Mayor Hudson on uh, setting our agendas here in the next couple of meetings or so and look if we can see if we can maybe uh, carve out some time and, and 
further have this conversation because I, I think we really do need to come back to this relatively soon on the at least on the Ivy Street and then basically what we need is um, just an understanding of what the council wants to do and then we can come back with some uh, some plans for you and, and we'll, we'll we'll give you proposals which by which we can fund these things depending on what your priorities are okay sounds good Councilor Parker mayor do you do you want to do a brief scan to see if there's consensus on the Ivy I mean I don't like that price increase. I don't like the fact that we were told one number and it became another, but okay. But I I do not think this is the week, the year to say to Canby voters, by the way, after what we've gone through, we're going to continue to put uh, power lines overhead. I mean, that's just crazy that we, if my direction to staff would be, let's figure out a way to do it. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, I mean, a fair question. I mean, you know, I'm, I think this isn't the last conversation that we have to have about um, about all that, that list that we just saw and how do we put that, you know, $1.1 million into that, that list. Um, that becomes, to your point earlier, about moving that from a five-year CIP plan to a 10-year CIP plan. You know, is that is that the trade off? Um, so, yeah, I mean, and we do have a five hundred thousand dollar windfall coming towards us. So we have not designated a place for that either. So. Uh, true, that is true as well. Um, that though. Is that urban renewal funds or is that? That would be the sale of the library. No, I understand that, but does that fall under urban renewal or city funds? I think it's a city-owned building. Yeah, city it, building. it's um, uh, it is a city building. So we're talking about the library, uh, the old library. Um, we could get a little ways down a rabbit hole here, so I'll just say this really quickly. Um, if that was a consideration, we'd need to have some some discussion around that. Um, I there may be some language in the uh, way that that building was acquired, that, that that fund needs to be paid back to the library. So in other words, it needs to sort of stick with library purposes. But I, I, I say that with understanding that there's a lot more discussion to that. Um, no one has mentioned that ever, no, Scott. That, that's new, that is new news. I love new news. I'm, I'm only saying that as a, just to plant a little seed of, I think we need to have that conversation before we designate those funds. I, 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 and, and I'd like the opportunity to look into that more before we commit something one way or another. I, I'd be happy to bring that back to you and, and talk about that further. Go government as an, as an onion has many, many layers. Um, so, okay, so to just kind of circle back and, and what is the desire of the council regarding the undergrounding? Like, do we want staff to look at putting that in the in the list in terms of helping to crunch numbers? Um, council Barwick? If I can get my mute off. Yeah, I definitely think that it's we should continue looking at it. I, I do, you know, I don't think undergrounding would have changed anything in Canby this weekend because I think it was the feeder lines that came in. So even those with underground power were were out. But um, I do think that we should continue looking at it. Um, I would love to uh, maybe put a little more pressure back on Cub to uh, maybe sharpen their pencil a little bit. And um, two hundred thousand dollars to put poles and lines down that road seems a little low, in my estimation which I'm not a professional estimator of that kind of work. Uh, it just seems like that maybe it would be more expensive for them. Um, so I don't know if there's any way to, you know, have them sharpen their pencil a little bit and give us a little bit more, but I definitely think it's a conversation we still need to continue having. Um, obviously I want that project done sooner than later. I want it done like last year, not another year from, you know, two years from now, but um, I think we have some time to, uh, keep talking to them. So okay. let's keep talking. Councilor Banks? I'm curious to know how we go about exploring or even discussing uh, a bond. Um, the opportunity to get a bond at low prices is going to go away. Um, 
and, and probably not that long from now. And so um, I, I don't know how quickly we can move on that, but um, you know, if we're looking at, we need to put $20 million into a bond and, and do it all or $21 million into a bond to include the Ivy thing. Um, that, that's a difference of 5%. So, um, you know, that would seem to be a solution, but I don't know what the process or procedure is. Maybe we can put it on our agenda for the upcoming retreat. I know we don't have anything else on the agenda for that. Um, so maybe we've got time for that discussion as well, but I think that would be a way to, to move forward on both projects. Okay, I agree. Councillor Spoon, Councillor Hensley, Councillor Tibbles, anything, other thoughts? I would add that it would be it would be good to add to that work session or the retreat. I think there's a lot, a lot there, and that's a lot of time. So, it seems like a perfect place for it to happen. I'd like to proceed with undergrounding the lines. I'm not happy about the expense at all. I agree with Councillor Barwig that it would be um, worth reopening the conversation with Cub. Two, to see if they can meet us anywhere else besides $200,000, but I'm still interested in pursuing it. It's the only opportunity we're ever going to get to do it, um, certainly in our lifetime, so it's worth doing to me. Okay. Any other thoughts? So, Scott, it seems like, yes, we're talking about moving forward with county roads. Um, Yes, let's fold in the uh, undergrounding of South Ivy um, into this conversation um, and um, some potentially financing pieces or what that could look like. Okay. You're good. That's that's great. I appreciate that. And we'll we'll be back with with more follow-up on, on all of this. Great. We are 15 minutes over in into our um, meeting time, um, I do need to take a, a biological break. Um, so we will pick up here. I've got uh, Cupertino says 715. So can we do 720? Is that five minutes enough time? That's right. good. We will go on a moment break and then I'll count us back in as quick as possible. Thank you, everyone. Great job tonight. Thank you.